God bless you. You are on tonight with Bishop Robert Johnson. Real Talk Broadcast Network. Amen. What we want to do, we want to prepare you for tonight's topic. Amen. With Father and Son. Amen. You're on tonight with our new host of Teen Awakening Next Generation. Amen. You are on with young brother Samaje Bogan. Also on with his dad tonight, Minister Billy Bogan Jr. Amen. Stay tuned as we take it to the level that God is calling. Fathers, grab your sons. If you're having a problem in church or your kids are having a problem, grab your sons right now. You don't want to miss this on the Real Talk Broadcast Network. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Amen. So thank you for tuning in with us tonight in the studio. We're blessed to have Minister Billy Bogan Jr. also with him tonight. His son, amen, young brother, Samaje. Amen. Tonight we want them to introduce themselves. Go ahead, Brother Samaje. Um I'm Samaje Bogan from Loving Community Outreach Ministry Church. And I help with like the camera, help recording the when people preach and stuff. All right, Minister Bogan. I'm just Minister Bogan. <laughs> he said he just Minister Bogan. Hey Amen. He has a a plethora of things that God has blessed him to do. Hey Amen. Within ministry, and he's truly a blessing. He is also the head of our security and anointed to preach the gospel. So, Samajay, we have you on tonight, and we want to give you the opportunity to interview your dad. No holes barred. But we want you to keep, keep it on the table because we know he's still dad. And you kind of close to him. He can reach over and grab you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless those who are on tonight. Sister Chapman, God bless you. Uh, Minister Greenwood, God bless you. All those who are on tonight. Stay tuned as we take it there. So, Samajay, we want you to open up, and we want you to become a part of what this show is about to produce. Can you do that tonight? Yes. But, but keep it clean, be loud, talk clear, and talk to your dad. Talk to your dad, not at your dad. Amen? So, let's open it up tonight. Minister Bogan, are you ready? No holes barred. No, go. he said no holes barred. Let's so, go. here we go. Invite everybody. I wish they had something like this back in the day so I could talk to my dad, you know, in, in front of the world so I know I couldn't get the whooping. Because the world, the world would be seeing what's going on. Hey, man, you have to have humor in life. Yeah. So, so, Brother Samaje, talk to your dad, man, about some of the things you feel, some of the things you go through, some of the things that you need as a young man. Be a young man, man, growing up and talk. Don't sit here and be immature. Here we go. So take it right now. Mm. Sometimes, like, <laughs> when you make me mad, I just want to fight. It's the friendly fade sometimes. But it's, it's, instead, I, like, I just, I don't know, I just take it out another way. And, yeah, that's so most wait, of so wait, 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 wait. I thought about that stuff growing up, too, but I wasn't bold <laughs> enough to say it. But wait a minute. When you say your dad makes you mad, you want to fight. So that means you want to go outside and fight somebody else? No. What does that mean? Huh? You want to fight him? <laughs> Do you know what you would be up against? Do the, and get parents, if you listen to this, do you know how many kids think like this? Yes. Do you know how many kids think, when you make me mad, I want to fight? What does that look like? What are you thinking in your head that you can do? Oh, some, sometimes I just like black out most of the time. Oh, you black out? Yeah, I just don't. I just don't be caring. Like, like when I like if I if I say like I want to do that, then yeah. So you black? You feel like you black out and you just don't care? So you just feel like you know, if dad say something else to you, you gonna start chunking them? Is that what you're saying? Well, that's what I think. That's what I want to do. Oh, uh, that's what you feel like doing, but but you really know you can't. What stops you? Because of my dad. Because of your dad. So talk to me about that part now. Talk to him. What is what? What are some of the things you can tell him to encourage him as a son that you appreciate him for? 
um, like buying me stuff when I don't deserve it and stuff, or like, like, like that's mainly it. Just it's just like doing extras when I really like when I don't deserve it at times, mm -hmm. most of the time. Letting me get by like with certain stuff that I shouldn't get get by with, mainly most of the time. Right. So me ask you a personal question. Do you love your dad? What is love? What does that mean? What does that look like? Like when you like love is like when you're really willing to do anything or sacrifice something for that person. Wow, so you're willing to sacrifice for your dad. I mean so it's since you're willing to sacrifice for your dad, what are the things that make you mad then? Just basically like stuff I don't get what I want. So when you don't get your way, so when most kids don't get their way, that's what they feel. They take it out on the parents. So it's really not the parents. It's just an internal feeling that the kids feel. Yep. Okay, go ahead. Tell Pop something else. Mm. He, he right there. Make sure you sit back, man. It's going to pick you up. Tell Pop something else. Because mm. you got a lot of kids right now watching you. You got a lot of people watching you. And I feel a lot of other kids, their fathers and mothers are sitting with their kids now. And they want to hear the truth. Right now, you got the microphone, you're able to express yourself. Your dad said he'll come on and listen. He, he, there's no threat, there's no nothing. So, so talk to your pops. Uh, so, right. Just like doing like more stuff than just like sitting in the house. You know? Like probably, just, I don't know, just doing anything else, like activities. Cause like most of the time we just sit in the house. And yeah. so, so you want more father and son time? What does that look like? Um, just like, just basically like going outside the house, you know, probably going to like chill, park, maybe, play basketball. Just you and him? Not your mom, not your sister? Nope. Just you and him? Mm -hmm. why, is that, why is that important for you, to you? Well, because I think every kid needs their dad in their life. And wow. Because I see my mom and my sister way too much. Wow. <laughs> He said, you see your mom and your sister way too much. So you really need that relationship with your dad. Let me ask you a question. As your pastor, I talk to you often about sometimes your behavior and some of the things you go through at school. We counsel, we have that relationship. You know, sometimes things going on, you say, I need to call Bishop and talk to him. Um, what are some of the reasons that you have, you feel you can't listen? Is it has to do with dad or is it just you? I think it's just me. Okay. Okay. And, and, and when you say you think it's just you, what could dad do to actually help you? Um. <laughs> we got people driving down the street listening to the basketball game, but that's okay. We can deal with them. So, 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 so again, in those situations that you're going through, what could dad help you with? What do you feel? Because this is what I'm saying. Every time there's a problem, your father runs to your rescue. Would you agree or disagree? Agree. So he's coming to your rescue, and he's making sure that no one harms you and nothing happens. But yet you still do the same things. So what can you do better to show your dad that you appreciate him? To, like, stop getting in trouble and let in trouble follow me where I go at school. Out of school. Okay. Minister both. Your son. Your from the, your loins. Your seed. Tell the audience what you feel about your son, man. Your son. This is what I feel about my son. He's gonna grow up to be a great man of God. Um, I choose not to put negativity in my son. I, I've grown from that, and negativity does not work. Telling my son he can't do something does not work. Telling him that he's a failure does not work. Even when I see a bunch of Fs, still encourage him saying, God called you to do better. God wants you to do better. I, I see my son being better than I am. Um, in my lifetime, and I want him to hear this, I wasn't always encouraged. My mom and dad didn't always encourage me. If I brought an F, they treated me just with that F look like. If I brought a D, they treated me just with that, that D look like. And I'm not going to repeat what he said the D and the F stand for. Wow. But I wasn't encouraged. I was called either a dummy, you ain't going to make it, you ain't going to succeed. And I said, you know what, I'm not going to give that to my children. Because they have this saying, they say, 
um, stick and stones may break my bones, words will never hurt. I can remember every word my mom and dad said to me that was negative, but I cannot remember all the butt whoopings I got. Wow. So I, I try to instill in my son that, you know what, you can be better than what the, what I see on on the paper. You can be better than what people are telling you at school you can be. You have to be positive and motivated, and you have to get God. You can't do nothing outside of God. God controls everything. So I want to let my son know that I, I love my son, and I want him to see. I don't want nothing to happen to him. But I remember something that Bishop told me some years ago. He said, Minister Bogan, have you ever went to the Inglewood Cemetery? And I said, I'm thinking he know about my mom being buried there. But then it dawned on me. I was like, well, no, Bishop. I, I never, I've really never paid attention. He said, there's a lot of young people in the cemetery than it is old. Whatever God does not do, it won't be done. So I go before God for my son. I want my son to know I pray for him all the time. Because I know it's difficult out there going to school, being persuaded by certain things, looking at rap videos. But what I want him to understand is that Go talk to them people that are rappers. Some of them are fake and falsifying information based on what they heard. They're not living that lifestyle. There's no way you're going to rap about something of shooting and killing and you're still making videos. Right. Let me ask you a question. Um, how often do you hug your son? Well, you know, you know what? I don't. I just started that. And Will Barnes was telling me about hugging my children. Just like I, I gave Sanye something yesterday. It, 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 it's something in me that I, I want my children to know that I love them. So I just started slapping him on the hand, giving him hug. Man, you, you, you better than that. You can do better. You know, I don't see my kids as failures. Well, was, Jay, how important is it for your dad to hug you? Do you feel you need that? <laughs> Not really. Not really. And so have you had that infection to where you felt your dad's love on your shoulder? Mm hmm you and when that happened, what did what do you feel like? Like crying. Feel like crying? I'm gonna ask you to do something for the audience right now. Alright? I'm gonna ask both of you to stand up, take your headphones off, and minister just embrace your husband. And your 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 son. <laughs> <laughs> oh. and, uh, I'm so I'm so used to doing the the couples talk, but I, I, you know what? I, there you go. That, that's what I'm talking about. So every time there's an issue, every time there's an issue, Samaje, and you feel like you say you want to fight your dad, you know what I want you to do? Hug it out. There you go. I want you to go to your dad, and I want you to just hug him. Instead of feeling like you want to fight, I just want you to hug him. You understand? Every time you have an issue in school, or every time there's something going on, come home and say, Dad, I want to talk to you. But before you talk to him, just hug him. Man, there's nothing wrong with that. That's the problem in the world. The world is so used to being evil to each other. Don't, don't know how to treat each other. Don't know how to love each other. But the Bible says, by this will all men know that you are my disciples because you have loved what? Toward, towards one another. Here's the key. Minister Bowman, your son is your disciple because he's being disciplined through the order of manhood in your house. So him being your disciple, compassion goes along with the development. And I'm so glad to say you to hear you say you're not saying go get five switches and tying them together and, 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 and I'm gonna leave that alone or go get the stench cord in the racetrack. I am so glad to hear that there's an African American man who's willing to time take the time to love his son based on the reality of life himself. Do you feel like there's failures in your life, Minister Bogan, that you could have did better at that you don't want him to yes. go down those streets? Can you talk yes. about it? Um there was times, like I said, I just came out the streets. It ain't been that long, maybe about a good six, seven years, really. So there was times growing up, I showed my my kids weapons. You know, I I I brought the the the, the game banging style to them. You know, even many, when they many was years ago, many, yeah, many, many years, years ago, many years ago, when they was really young. Yes, and when I went and when I did that, I didn't think that would have no effect. On them, I thought they're young. They won't, you know, understand this. You know, I'm moving on. But Talk when to I, fathers what, out there, man. Talk when, to the fathers. When when I begin to to transform, once I begin to get God, and my life started to change, there were some things God was dealing with me with, saying that I have to go back and deal with. And I never knew that my son was gonna want to play with guns. I didn't know my daughter was gonna want to run her mouth. I didn't know my son wasn't gonna. 
going to pick up the language of the game banging like like I, I don't know the language because I know the language and God began to, to reveal something to me one day I was at the park and he was like you need to go back and get it right with your son Wow. and I said what do you mean Lord he said everything that you did that you instilled in him based on the world is now taking effect I said Lord what you mean Lord I've been in Christ I'm doing it right he said but it's still there you have to go back and redo it all over again and tell him the truth. Wow. How did you live? Tell him the truth. How I didn't get you nowhere. Tell him the truth that that's not the life that you're supposed to live. Tell him that's not where you're going to, that's where he's going to end up. And I began to do that to my son. And I, I, I preach to my son all the time, Bishop. I, I preach to the whole family all the time because I just want them to get what I've got. Right. True peace. Mm. The world cannot offer you peace anything yes. and can't give you nothing yes only god gives true understanding and i deal with my son and my children based on wisdom and knowledge of the word of god wow. even when i don't even understand it i pray fathers are listening i pray yes. fathers yes. because listening. wisdom from god is the most important thing you can when i want to knock my son head, head off god said i need you to go to the park and pray wow when i want to Say things wrong to my son or degrade him. I took psychology one on one. So me being mental with my kids, I can actually break you down. I don't have to touch you, but I can mess you up mentally. But I choose not to. God said, "Look, I need you to go pray. I need you to go pray." When I want to do things or say things, God said, "No, no, no. no. That's not who he is. He's a conqueror. He's a king. You tell him everything. I'm telling you to tell." And I tell my children, "You a king. You a queen. You, 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 you belong to God." You belong to God. And I tell my children that. It's okay to be different. And a lot of men don't tell their kids it's okay to be different. It's okay you're not going to be liked. Yes. So my lifestyle has rubbed off on my children. And I had to go back and redo it. Wow. And I'm asking God to, 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 wow. to, to, to really come in and do a work in my children. Because I made a bad mistake. Wow. Men out there, we make bad decisions when we're younger. We make bad choices. And it rubs off on our children. That's why I don't blame him for nothing. I say, God, is my fault. I, I, I don't blame him. I take the charge. It's my fault why he's doing that. It's my fault why the children are doing that. It's my fault. I take no, I, I the blame for it. So, Monte, you hearing your dad talk now and watching him talk, how does that make you feel as a young man that no matter what you do, just like God, no matter what you do, your father's there. No matter what mistake you've made, He's willing with his arms open, saying, son, I'm here, come to me. How does that make you feel? All right. Right. Like, I really have nothing to lose. Because if he's, like, if he has his arms out for anything that basically I do, like, I don't have anything to lose. So that makes, that should make me more of a, to do better so he can keep him out there. Yeah, I ain't got to worry about him trying to close it. Wow. Wow, how does it make you feel to have a mom and a dad? A lot of kids today don't have that, that, that comfort at home to walk into, to have two parents who work and try to give you things that are conducive for your life. How does that make you feel? Because I want you to think. I want you to start thinking about what you have and what's going on in your life and how now you can better serve as a son. So as saying that, let me ask you a question. What is a son? And what do you think a son looks like? Um... Basically, what you're going to say to the disciple, to the parent that has birthed the son, basically. And it feels good to have both parents in your life because, like you said, most yes. kids don't have that. So they usually either live with their grandparents or a relative, and they they use the excuse to doing the game bang and stuff just because they don't have parents or a dad in their life. Most, some of the time, it can be true. Like, like with young girls, like most of them, they don't have their dads in their life. That's why they continue to do certain stuff or wear certain things maybe because of that they don't have a dad to like tell them like what what guys can really do or they try to do it to them wow wow so so minister greenwood said this he said truly believe a father's touch is critical it builds security within a child and that's just what you said minister bogan you had to go back and rewrite yes. um the mistakes you made believe it or not that's in the bible God's first creation um, in, in Adam was flawed. God says that he had to send the second man, Adam, which is the Lord Evan, from above to rewrite creation. 
and give us the opportunity to live in him. So we really appreciate you saying that you went back and the things that you did in your life were not conducive as a man, not just as a Christian, as a man. See, here's one of the problems. We can't, as men, sometimes sit and admit our wrong because of pride. But your pride was not was a non-factor. And you said, you know what? I'm willing to go back and so I can give my kid a better chance and a better opportunity to live. I want to have closing remarks from both of you, starting with the dad. This is what I would like to say to all the dads out there. Um, parents in general, love your children. Speak forth what God has called your children to be. I don't care what it looks like on paper. I don't care what it looks like that somebody's saying. If God has chosen your child to be somebody in him, and that's all you speak with the word of God. I don't speak nothing else but the word of God to my children. Because even when someone, let me tell you when you know you're doing the right thing and you're saying the right thing. Because there will always be somebody that's going to come back with a negative remark saying your ch children are getting over on you. You're not disciplining your children. Yes, I am. I'm giving them the word of God. Because if the word of God does not change them, I can't change them. I am disciplining my children. Because I'm not going upside their head does not mean I'm not disciplining my child. I, I can take things from them. But there's a time where God says, give it back. So I want to tell the fathers and the parents. Minister to your children about the word of God. Talk to your children about the word of God. Stop talking about their failures. They know they fail. Do you know most kids that bring F's home and D's home already labeled themselves as a failure? Mm. Do you know when they got to show that report card, they already feel they, they, they failed? Mm -hmm. They don't want to show. Kids don't want to show their mom and dad F's and D's. They don't. They proud when they bring it home the B's and A's. But even in the midst of the F and D's that they got, um, um, this is the word of God. God called you to be better. God called you to be a king. You're going to be a conqueror. You're going to be this. This is who you going to, this is who God said you are. And that's what I stood in, even over the F and D's. And I sent him back to school and say, you got to get it right. Mm. Get it right with God. Mm. Because that's the only person that's going to help you get it. You want a better mm. grade? Seek God. Mm. You, want, you want better things? Seek God. Mm. Don't seek me because I'll fail you. Mm. Seek God. And if you ask the sister Bogan, she tell, seek God. Yes. I cannot bless you like God. Mm. But if you want them better grades, go to church and listen. I, I'm not saying this to be funny, but I tell my children, go to church and listen to the bishop. Everything that you're going through, Bishop has told you how to come out of it based on the word of God. Based on the word. If you would just pay attention in Bible study, pay attention in Christian, if you would just pay attention just a little bit, you will find out that your answer is right there in the word of God. It's right there in the word. And that's my closing remark to the parents. We're not teaching our kids the word of God. What we're doing is giving them based on our own emotions, what we feel, what we think, how we breathe this air. No, it's based on the word of God. Just because a child brings home the F don't mean he's F material. That's right. It doesn't mean he's F material. Right. He can be better than that F. But when, when we do as parents go up to the school and say, what's going on with this class? Is he passing it? Is he doing his best? Is he messing around? Let's find the root. Is the class too hard? Uh, what's yes. going on? That's a parent's job. Not just let your kids sit there and just fail. And just fail, and you not. Oh, I gotta go to work. Oh, I got this. I gotta do my forty hours. I gotta do my fifty hours. And your child is out there starving, needing some help, and you won't even help them. So what do they do? Throw their hands up. Well, mom and daddy won't help me. So you know what? I just do it the best way I can. That's not the way I'm gonna do this thing right here. I, I was brought up not like this. This young son has a mother and father in the gospel, and I'm gonna put it out there because I know this is gonna get shared, and it might get back to family. My mom and dad. Didn't take me to church. I was picked up by an a, a, a older lady, which was one of my best friends, who took us to church. My mom and dad didn't steal the word of God in us. They, they, they told us nothing about the word of God, only what they experienced. Mm. Did some of that rub off? Yes. But when it came down for my trials and tribulations, like my son would go through, I didn't learn how to defeat my trials. and I didn't know how to defeat the enemy. I didn't know what to do when the enemy came upon me. All I knew is what they instilled in me, which was... With the worldly thing, that's how that's how I knew how to fight. I didn't know how to fight in the spirit. Mm. I wasn't trained like that. Only in the natural. So I'm training my children. You fight in the spirit, 
You fight in the word of God. You pray. I don't care if you don't know how to pray. Talk to God. He hear you. Talk to God. I tell my let me tell you how powerful children are. I tell my children, you know what? I don't think God hear me. Y'all go pray for me. And I'll be saying, Y'all go pray for me. God will hear y'all. Y'all babies. He hear you praying for your parents. And I would give them that test to say, pray for me. And when something comes good, I'll go back and say, Y'all must have been praying for me because this turned out pretty good. And I want to encourage my children to be in prayer. To God is everything, Bishop. Yes, amen. Brother Samaje, man, I tell you, I love you, man. You know what? I, I know you as a young man have things that you go through, but every time I ask you to do something in church, or even if we're away, you'll come sit by me, or you'll talk to me. You know what I'm saying? Even when there's something going on to where you can't even talk to your dad, he has trusted in me enough for you to call me. And I want to tell you, I love you, and I appreciate for every struggle that you have, because I know God is building you through the struggles. All those struggles will be your testimonies that you will be able to share with another young person as you get older. Have a closing words, man. Mm. I just think for us teens and kids, we should just like appreciate what we have more. Like, especially if we, especially if we have parents in our life, because like I said, most kids don't got parents in their life. They only either have their dad or their mom, and most of them just live with their relatives. They don't get to really see their parents like that either because they on drugs or they chose to abandon them, abuse them. So we just need to appreciate what we got more what we got. Hey man, hey man. So again, thank you for tuning in. You have been on the Real Talk Broadcast Network with Bishop Robert Johnson and Minister Billy Bogan and Brother Samaje Bogan. Hey man, they are on tonight to share in that. And again, let me say something. Most parents are watching a basketball game right now. And most men, that's not a big thing. And it's, it's not a bad thing. But this man chose to come out and come on and forsake the game to help other men who might be going through struggles with their children and teach and show them how to overcome. Amen. So I thank God for you and I thank God for what he's doing and I do thank God for all those who tuned in. Again, don't forget GK God Knows Radio. Go to our website. They are our sponsor, www.gkgodknows.org. Um, don't miss Pastor Will Barnes every morning at 8 a.m. for the B-I-B-L-E, Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. Don't miss it, a powerful show. Amen. Not only are we on Facebook and all social media, but I, as I just said, you can hear us even while you're on your, at work. Go to the website and you can actually download our app. God bless you. You are incredible, and you do incredible things in God. Be blessed, and we love you.